Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and I did a video last week about the most dangerous solo capable ship to fly. And what I was really covering was what makes them dangerous to others. Now some people thought that the video, based on the title, was going to be more about the most dangerous solo ship to fly, as in like, what's dangerous for you to be in because others may attack you. So, what the hell, let's go ahead and make that video too. Now, there's a few considerations before getting into the ships that are worth discussing. Primarily, that they don't have to be ships that can be, like, only fit one person. You know, for an example, a Super Hornet is a two-seater craft, but it's clearly a capable as a solo person ship. Um, also, the overall escapability is an important trait to consider here, because a ship may not be a real contender for combat, but if it has the ability to get out and run, that removes it from this list. You know, an example of one that I removed was the Prospector, because while it's far from combat capable, um, you can do your mining from the cockpit, meaning that if a threat shows up, it's not hard to stop mining and get moving. Um, you could even drop the ore and leave it behind as an incentive, since we know that they can detach. Also, ore isn't as likely to be as valuable to pirates as something more like standardized cargo. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just jump into it. And the first on the list is a starter ship, and it's the Aurora CL. Now sure, the CL comes with a jump drive, meaning that it has the capability of moving between systems in its stock configuration. But this game isn't going to be like Elite, where you can just jump to another system from anywhere. You need a wormhole and a jump point and a jump engine to actually make that happen. So it's not a real benefit in an attack situation to have a jump drive. Now what is notable is the fact that you have twice the cargo carrying capacity of the other Auroras, which makes you a bigger target. And you don't have the increased weaponry on something like the Aurora LN. Um, and while you have pretty good durability for a starter ship, you don't have much speed or agility, and that only gets worse the more cargo that you're carrying. So basically, you're an entry-level ship carrying more cargo and not really able to defend yourself. That's why I always suggest that people get the Aurora LN and upgrade the box later on in the game because all of the Auroras can carry that bigger box, but you only get the hard points if you get the Aurora LN. Either way, all of the non-LN models have the same risk of being in this category, but the increased cargo of the CL by default is what makes it on this list. Up next is in the semi-starter category, and it's the Reliant line, except for maybe the Tana. The Tana or the Skirmisher model is more designed for combat with a better power plant and shields, but even then, if it still flies like the Corey does, it's not fast and it's not agile. Take away those perks for the Skirmisher and you're left with not a whole lot. You know, the, the, the ships are totally ready to fly solo, but the base model is probably the one that's most at risk because it's the one that's more likely to be carrying cargo as it's labeled as a mini hauler. In addition to not having the missiles that the other variants have, that means you're less able to defend yourself. Now, it may end up having the option to equip a little bit more weaponry, which may be its saving grace, but it depends on the overall flexibility you get out of that gimbal mount currently occupied by a tractor beam. The news van and the researcher aren't as likely to be targeted for cargo, but having information and data stolen is a possibility, and regardless of the reason for the attack, the ship is at risk. Frankly, I don't have any confidence in the Reliant line, and it's why I don't ever really recommend it to anybody outside of maybe science or filming, but even then in the filming category, the ship's not all that fast, it's not all that agile, so it's going to have to have a hell of a zoom on it to be able to really do much, because if you're trying to film a race, for example, you're not keeping up. Getting one of these ships for combat is a silly move, even in the upgraded Tana option. The next one is a series kind of like the Reliant, and what I mean is the whole series is in trouble, and that's because I'm talking about the whole series. Capable of hauling huge amounts of cargo for their size, um, there are some risks. One is obvious. You know, you have a lot of cargo, which equals a big t uh, target and a big payday for those that want to attack you. Along those same lines, the ships carry their cargo externally on those trellises, so they can carry more. However, that means there's very little shielding for that cargo. So if there's values, valuables in the cargo, there's not a lot of mystery there. It's going to be easy to see what you have with a scanner. Um, with such a laser focus on cargo, there's very little weaponry on these ships, um, and with the pilots only really controlling a few measly guns, and turrets not really making an appearance until you get to the whole sea, that causes some defense issues too. And even with the turrets, you know, they're pretty sparsely placed. You get two on each of the bigger models, um, and they're unlikely to defend a ship of, its, of this size on its own. These ships are awesome, and they fit their needs well, but you really need to play it smart if you decide to fly one in the whole series, because fully laden, they're going to have very little maneuverability, and even with huge engines, you're going to need those to get up to speed and to move the cargo. You're not going to be able to run all that fast, and you're not really going to be able to evade fire. So, um, it is a risky ship to fly, regardless of which whole series you're talking about. 
The last ship that I wanted to include here was the Constellation Taurus, and I think the Taurus is actually a bit of a stretch to include here because it should be relatively capable solo, but it's absolutely not designed to be used that way. Um, you also could carry a lot of cargo compared to other ships of its size, and some of that cargo space even comes at the expense of a turret um, and a uh, detachable fighter. So while you have some decent forward-facing weaponry, if you're attacked by smaller targets, you're going to have a really hard time keeping your weapons on that target. The ship's also not really all that agile, and it's going to be even worse when you get fully laden. The lack of a second turret means that even if you put in AI modules, you're still going to have a lot of blind spots on this ship. Add to that the temptation of what you may have in your smuggler's hold, and you could get a little bit more attention in this craft than you really wanted to. So those are what I'm calling the most dangerous ships to fly, but that comes with a huge caveat. These ships aren't really meant to be flown on their own. Cargo ships are meant to have an escort or stay in safer areas. You know, there's some that can hold their own better than others, like the Banu Merchantman, who's a blockade runner with some decent weaponry on it with fast speeds, and the Andromeda with two turrets and a P-52 to be deployed in more dangerous situations. Um, but overall, if you carry cargo, you're not in the most combat-capable ship, and you're going to want that escort. And when I refer to safer areas, highly patrolled UEE systems are going to have trade lanes where you're likely to be able to complete missions without a whole lot of issue. But that doesn't mean it won't happen. So you really need to play it smart, understand the purpose of what these ships are, and go from there. And that's also going to include either bringing your buddies along or hiring NPCs to help you man your stations and increase your overall capability if you're in a cargo ship. Now, if I mention your ship on this list, don't get upset, don't go melting it right away. I'm not saying it's a bad ship. Just that you need to consider all factors before leaving your hangar. That's it. So, um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, go ahead and add in your thoughts on what you feel, if, like what ships meet this category. And stay tuned for a whole lot more coming soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care. <laughs>